Hello everyone. In this video we will create simple program in C code and burn it into the memory of the microcontroller. We will write our own program and compile the hex file, using the Admiral Studio as the integrated development platform. We will configure fuse bits and upload hex file into the memory of the AVR Atmega 328P microcontroller, using our own programmer and software of Redoot. Of Redoot is a program for downloading and uploading neon chip memories of Atmel's AVR microcontrollers. It can program the Flash and EPROM, and where supported by the serial programming protocol, it can program fuse and lock bits. Let's begin. Open Atmel Studio. If you don't have Atmel Studio, you should download and install it. Go to File New Project the project generation wizard will appear. This dialog provides the option to specify the programming language and project template to be used. This project will use C, so make sure CC++ is selected in the upper left corner. Select the GCCC executable project option from the template list to generate a bare bones executable project. Give the project a name and click OK. Next, it is necessary to specify which device the project will be developed for. This project will be developed for the AVR Atmega 328P microcontroller. Select the Atmega 328P entry in the device list and confirm the device selection by clicking OK. A new GCCC executable project has now been created for the AVR Atmega 328P device. The Solution Explorer will list the contents of the newly generated solution. If not already open, it can be accessed through View, Solution Explorer, or by pressing Ctrl Alt L. The default generated code should be removed. Type the code of program in the main source editor area of Atmel Studio. The main source editor, this window is the main editor for the source files in the current project. You can load any file, in your current project, by double clicking it in the solution explorer. The editor has spell check and autocomplete features. We must tell compiler at what speed our chip is running to that it can calculate delays properly. Next, we include the preamble, which is where we put our include information from other files, which defines global variables and functions. If you're going to be using a library of functions from some other source code, or just reusing your own code, this is where you'll do it. After the preamble comes the main function, the main function is unique and set apart from all other functions. Every C program must have exactly one main function. Main is where the AVR starts executing your code when the power first goes on, so it's the entry point of the program. Set pin 0 of the port B as output. We do this by writing a binary number to the data direction register B. The data direction register B allows us to make the bits of register B input or output. Writing a 1 makes them output, while a 0 would make them input. Being that we are attaching an LED to act as output, we write a binary number, making the pin 0 of port B as output. This statement is a loop, often referred to as the main loop or event loop. This code is always true. Therefore, it executes over and over again in an infinite loop. It never ceases. Therefore, LED will be blinking in an infinity, unless power is shut off from the microcontroller or the code is erased from program memory. This line, gives a 1 to the PB0 of port B. It is a hardware register on the AVR chip that contains 8 pins, PB7 to PB0, going from left to right. Putting a 1 at the end gives a 1 to PB0. This sets PB0 high which turns it on. Therefore, the LED attached to pin PB0 will turn on and light up it on. This statement create a 1 second delay, so that the LED turns and stays on for exactly 1 second. This line turns off all 8 port B pins, so that even PB0 is off, so the LED turns off. It turns off exactly for one second, before starting the loop all over again and encountering the line, 
which turns it back on, repeating the process all over. This happens infinitely so that the LED constantly blinks on and off. The last line of our code is a return statement. Even though this code is never executed, because there is an infinite loop which never ends, for our programs that run on desktop computers, it's important for the operating system to know whether they ran correctly or not. For that reason, GCC, our compiler, wants every main function to end with a return code. Return codes are needless for AVR code, which runs freestanding of any supporting operating system. Nevertheless, the compiler will raise a warning if you don't end main with return. The final step is the building the project. It means compiling and finally linking all object files to generate the executable file hex file. This hex file is generated inside the folder debug which is inside the project folder. This hex file is ready to be loaded into the microcontroller chip. How to transfer this hex file into the microcontroller's memory will be described later. First need to configure fuse bits of microcontroller. Some of the things you can do by changing the value of the fuses include It is important to remember that some of the fuse bits can be used to lock certain aspects of the chip and can potentially break it. Make it unusable. There are a total of 19 fuse bits that are used in the Omega 320P and they are separated into three different fuse bytes. Three of the fuse bits are contained in the extended fuse byte. 8 are contained in the fuse high byte, and 8 more are contained in the fuse low byte. There is also a fourth byte that is used to program the lock bits. Lock bits are not covered by this video. Each byte is 8 bits and each bit is a separate setting or flag. When we talk about setting, not setting, programmed, not programmed fuses we are actually using binary. 1 means not set, not programmed and a 0 means set, programmed. When programming the fuses you can use binary notation or more commonly hexadecimal notation. For example, in this video we will tell about program fuse bits contained in the fuse low byte. The low byte fuse deals with the clock source, how fast the chip will run, and how long it waits at startup. 80 Mega 320p chips have a built-in RC oscillator, which has a 8 MHz frequency. New chips are shipped with this set as the clock source and the clock rate divide by 8 fuse active, resulting in a 1 MHz system clock. The startup time is set to maximum and timeout period enabled. This setting is used so that all users can make their desired clock source setting using any available programming interface. 80 Mega 320p chips generally have the following fuse settings. The 80 Mega chips can be run at different speeds or frequencies and the frequency is determined by the clock source that is used. The, cl the clock signal can come from an internal oscillator, an external crystal resonator, or an external signal. We will use 80 Mega 320p chip with an external 16 MHz crystal. Therefore, we need to program bits of fuse low byte accordingly. Bits 3 to 0 control the oscillator choice, and the default setting is to use the calibrated internal RC oscillator, which we don't want. We want a low power crystal oscillator operation from 8 to 16 MHz, so bits 3 to 1 should be set to 1. Bits 5 and 4 control the startup time, and the default setting of 1 and 0 is for a startup delay of 6 clock cycles from power down and power save plus an additional startup delay of 14 clock cycles plus 65 milliseconds from reset. To be on the safe side for a low power crystal oscillator, we want the maximum delay possible of 16,000 clock cycles from power down and power save, so startup time 1 should be set to 1, plus an additional startup delay of 14 clock cycles plus 65 milliseconds from reset, so startup time 0 should be set to 1. In addition, clock source 0 should be set to 1. Bit 6 controls the clock output to port B0, which we don't care about. So, bit 6 can be left set to 1. 
bit 7 controls the divide by 8 operation and the default setting of 0, has the feature enabled, which we don't want. So, bit 7 needs to be changed from 0 to 1. Therefore, the new fuse low byte should be set in hexadecimal notation is. To program bits of the fuse low byte we can use our programmer and software, Everdude. Program bits of the fuse low byte we can use our programmer and software Everdude. Everdude is a command line utility. that is used to download from and upload to Apple microcontrollers. Download and install Dude. The latest version available is 6. Point. First, we must add describe our programmer to the configuration file of Everdude. On Windows the configuration file is usally in the same location as the executable file of Everdude. Open configuration file Everdude conf. Type Save and close configuration file. Before starting the Everdude, we must connect the microcontroller to the programmer, according to the scheme. Then we need to connect the programmer to COM port of the computer. Open DOS prompt window. At the DOS prompt, change to the directory where Everdude installed. To view the list of programmer that Everdude is supported, type command. If all is well. The list should have programmer is id, isprogv1. To view the list of idle devices that Everdude is supported, type command The list should have device M320P, for at light mega 320P. Next, type command In this case, our programmer uses the isprogv one driver, and the microcontroller being used is in at Mega 320p. This lines are responses from Everdude, it presents the at Mega 320p signature in hexadecimal notation. It presents the fuse bit programming currently also in hexadecimal notation, in this case, fuse bytes are programmed per factory default. Next, type command It is a command to tell Everdude what programmer is being used and what Edmel microcontroller is attached and to change the fuse low byte. This lines are responses from Everdude. Each line presents the step that was done. It presents the new fuse bit programming in the Omega 320p chip. Now the clock signal should come from low power crystal oscillator. Type the command again, to check correctness fuse bytes. All is correct. Now is time of most interesting part of the video. 
burning the program into the memory of the microcontroller. First, copy the hex file or program we made at the beginning of the video into Everdo directory. Then, type the command. The command writes the hex file to the microcontroller's memory. OK. Programming is complete. Now, the microcontroller works in accordance with the instructions of our program. Let's check it out. Connect components in accordance with schematic diagram. First, we need power, as all AVR circuits do. About 5 volts of power is sufficient for operation of the AVR chip. You can get this either from batteries or a DC power supply. We connect plus 5 volts of power to pin 7 and connect pin 8 to ground. In between both pins, we place a ceramic capacitor to smooth out the power of the power supply so that the AVR chip gets a smooth power line. The 10 kilo ohms resistor is used to provide power on reset to the device. We connect the anode of our LED to AVR pin PBO. This is pin 14 of the Omega 320P. Since it is in LED, we want to limit current flowing to the LED so it doesn't burn out. This is why we place a resistor in series with the LED. The cathode of the LED gets connected to ground. 16 MHz crystal is used to provide clock for the Omega 320P microcontroller and 22 picofarad capacitors are used to stabilize the operation of crystal. These are all the connections necessary to light up the LED. Power supply. OK. LED is blinking with one second delay. The work of the microcontroller corresponds to our tasks. Admittedly, that was a long process for just flashing in LED, but the truth is that you have successfully cleared major hurdles, creating a hardware platform for programming an AVR microcontroller, using the Atmel Studio as the integrated development platform, using Everdude as software for configuring and programming an AVR microcontroller. In next videos we will continue studying of the microcontrollers, electronic technology and electronic projects. We will make a program to control blinking three LEDs in serial, parallel and random modes. To do this, we will use three ports of the microcontroller. We will upload program into the microcontroller flash memory. We will assemble the electrical circuit on base of the AVR Mega 320P chip to check the work of program code. It will be interesting, more videos coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel not to miss anything. Thank you for watching. See you next time.